U.S. science and energy leaders are calling it a historic breakthrough. At the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California, scientists performed a fusion experiment that resulted in a net gain in energy. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Inside the National Ignition Facility, the size of a football stadium, scientists focused 192 laser beams on a capsule inside a small cylinder, releasing the energy. Last week, for the first time, they designed this experiment so that the fusion fuel stayed hot enough, dense enough, and round enough for long enough that it ignited, and it produced more energies than the lasers had deposited. About two megajoules in, about three megajoules out a gain of 1.5. The energy production took less time than it takes light to travel one inch. Kind of fast. Fusion powers the sun. Scientists have pursued developing fusion on Earth for decades. University of Wisconsin professor of engineering physics Steffi Diem compares how little it could take for fusion to produce energy compared to other methods. You only need the um, hydrogen or heavier forms of hydrogen extracted from two bathtubs full of water uh, combined with the lithium and five laptop batteries. This is compared to the same energy you'd need from burning 280 tons of coal. And that produces 380 tons of pollution. So just that alone means we should pursue fusion energy. UCLA physics professor Troy Carter describes fusion as an always-on power that could potentially be used to fight climate change. The advantage of fusion is you can put it wherever you need it and you can turn it on when you need it. It also represents a much higher power density source compared to solar and wind. So you, for a small footprint, you can generate a lot of power. Um, this could be useful for a, a lot of things that we might need to do in the future, like desalination of water uh, or even active removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. University of Wisconsin professor Steffi Diem says one hurdle is developing material that can withstand such extreme conditions. The director of the Lawrence Livermore National Lab points out that in this test, it's just one ignition. To be available for public energy use, scientists would need to be able to produce many, many ignition events per minute. She estimates commercialized fusion is still decades away. Mark New, CGTN, San Francisco.